Good morning. Today is a bright, sunny, shiny day. So I thought I would read a story to my Caterpillar Club friends. I'm sitting in my backyard. I found a sunny spot. You can see my sun hat shades my face so I won't get more sunburned. And I hope you enjoy the story about the birds. I picked this spot because in the background while I'm reading, you just might see some of the many, many birds that claim my yard as their home flying back and forth because today the birds are very, very busy. The book I picked is called Six Crows and it's a book by Leo Leone. And as you know, I love Leo Leone's stories. This is a fable, which means it's a story that's been told hundreds and hundreds of times and maybe all around the world. So you enjoy this story and then we'll look for birds and signs of birds in my backyard. In a peaceful valley at the foot of the Balabadur Hills, a farmer cultivated a field of wheat. The soil was fertile and the spring rains had been gentle. And you can see that that valley may be in the country of India or Pakistan, somewhere else in our great big wild world. Now life had been good and happy were it not for the six noisy crows who nestled in a tree nearby. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six noisy crows. Just when the wheat was about to ripen, the crows descended upon the field and pecked away at the tender grains. Ooh, they like that wheat. Yum, yum. The farmer tried to chase the crows from the field, but no sooner had he returned to his hut than they were back. So in desperation, he belt a scarecrow. There's his first attempt at a scarecrow. When the crows saw it standing in the field, waving a big stick, they were frightened. They huddled in their tree and wondered what to do. We must scare that thing away, they said. But how? How would they do that? Let's set the field on fire, shouted one of the crows. Oh, that would be silly. That would be the end of our wheat the others said. Well, there were many proposals, but at last they agreed they would make a ferocious kite. They gathered bark and dry leaves and made a fierce and very ugly bird right there. Actually, I don't even think it's ugly, but it certainly is big and it might be scary. The next morning, they flew the kite over the field. The scarecrow didn't budge, but the farmer was very frightened. He ran into his hut and bolted the door tight. I must build a scarier scarecrow, he said. Soon, a giant figure brandishing two swords stood in the wheat field, and its angry mouth seemed to grunt. That should do it, said the farmer. All right, I agree. That scarecrow looks very scary. I wouldn't want to have that scarecrow in my yard, even if I needed to scare away crows. But when the crows saw the new menace, they gathered more bark and more leaves, and they built an even larger and more ferocious kite. They flew it over the field, back and forth. The farmer was so scared that he didn't dare leave his hut. Well, that bird is looking a bit scarier. Look at its talons. It, looked like, it looks like it might come down and grab the farmer by the hair. Oh, there goes a rabbit. Maybe it's coming to listen to the story. From her nest in an old tree trunk, an owl who had been watching the goings-on shook her head. Oh, I don't know who is sillier, the farmer or those crows. And the owl laughed. Ooh, ooh, ooh. When 
she noticed that the wheat was wilting from neglect, she decided she'd better talk to that farmer. Why don't you make peace, you and the crows, she said. Aw, it's too late now, said the farmer. It's never too late to talk things over, said the owl. Very wise words, indeed. Owls are known to be wise. Then she went to the crows. What can we do, asked the crows, dismayed when they heard that the wheat crop was in danger. We'll go and talk things over, said the owl. Words can do magic. The crows and the farmer agreed to meet near the owl's nest. While the owl looked on, they talked and talked, first in anger, then more reasonably, and finally, just like old friends. I must confess, I miss your happy cackling, said the farmer. Oh, and we've missed your wheat, said the crows. Soon they were laughing together. We must thank Owl, said the farmer. But where is she? Owl's nest was empty. They looked all over. Where had Owl gone? Finally, they went to the field. And there stood the giant scarecrow. But something was different. The nasty grin had turned into a giant smile. The owl was perched on the giant's arm. What happened? What happened? They all asked. And the owl said, it was magic. And that is the end of the story about the six crows. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about my yard. I don't have crows. I don't have that big of a yard. But I have lots and lots of birds, sparrows, finches, cardinals. I just love cardinals. Robins, of course. But I have one bird that to me is a little bit like a crow. So I've had to make fan friends with this kind of bird. It's called a grackle. It's pretty big and I think it's kind of a menace to the other birds sometimes. They seem to gang up on the other birds. but. I know that I need to share my yard with all the birds because, well, it's all of our world. So here goes, we're going to go around and we're going to look for signs of birds. And most particularly, I'm going to point out and I want you to look for ways that you see birds are building nests because they're certainly busy right now. And of course they have to eat every day, but they're building their nests so that soon they can lay their eggs and the eggs can hatch and there will be new baby birds. I just love to see new baby birds. All right, well, I'm going to stop this portion of the video and then we'll do our hunt for birds. I hope we don't see a crow, but if we do, we'll make friends, won't we? All righty, see you in a bit. All right, well, we're ready to start on our walk where we look for things that show us birds have been busy in the yard. Now, I was distracted for a minute because I saw a bird of prey and I would try to capture it with my phone, but I'm not sure that I could. I'd be looking right up at the sun, but it was flying overhead looking for a tasty morsel for lunch. Here, you can see that this part right here in my perennial, well, this is a prairie grass, Anyways, these are what the birds like to pull out with their beaks because, oh, I wasn't even showing it. There we go, there's better. They like to pull it out with their beak. I'll pull another one so you can see. They're strong with their beaks. They like to pull it out because they take these pieces back to their nests and use them to build their nests. That's one sign that the birds are busy. Let's look for more signs. Oh goodness, here's something I hadn't spotted before. Pretty sure it's probably a bird that's been doing this, but you can see they've been pecking at the bark there. And the reason they're doing that is that when they pick away this bark, they can see where there have been insects in here and then they can get the insects for some lunch. Hmm, what do you think about an insect for lunch? Would that be yummy? Maybe so. There's more of it over here, you can see. I removed that piece, it was just probably 
tilted up there like that for me. Silly me. All right. Well, when you look down at these leaves here, they've been nestling over the plants all winter long. But the birds will come through and pick them out of the way like that with their beak. Just like I'm doing with my hand. And they'll peck down in there to find pieces like this for their nest. Maybe even leaves for their nest. I don't know. But what they also do is when they're down in here, they might find a worm that's come out. Or they might find a bug or a moth or some such thing like that to eat. And maybe if they're seed-loving birds, they'll find a seed or two to eat. But they've got to eat and build nests, so they're certainly very busy doing all that. I left this leaf litter in my yard over the winter because it does protect the plants and it provides uh, food for the birds and um, foods, food for the other animals in my yard as well. All right, let's head on, see what else we can find. Okay, I want to walk this way because today, well, first of all, there's a birdhouse right there that my neighbor put up. And the birds are in and out. Not right this minute because we're here. So they don't want to come around. They'll wait until I'm gone. All right, I'm doing the tightrope walk over to the birdhouse here. Well, I have it hanging on a shepherd's crook. And right now, there's not anything in it. But this morning, I saw a, support, a bird sitting on the front porch of the bird nest. So I'm hoping that this year a bird will build a nest in there. Wouldn't that be exciting? Then there's one more thing I know I can show you that's nearby. Let me walk back across the, what I call the tightrope walk. All right. There are stepping stones here, but they're covered. Okay, so see that birdhouse up there? Now my husband built that birdhouse and he built one for every single family in my family. So they could all have a birdhouse in their backyard. But it was designed to be a bird feeder. You open the lid and you pour the bird seed in the top and then that platform provides a place for the birds to feed. When we installed it, the birds said, nope, it's better off as a bird house. So every year, some birds come along and they land on the platform and then they scoot up underneath the place where you can see some things hanging out right now. And I've noticed there are birds back that have been in and out, in and out, in and out. I don't want to get too close because I don't want them to get scared that I'm going to bother their nest. But they've been doing that. Busy, busy. And I have one more thing to show you and then I'm going to wrap it up so that I don't make too long of a movie here. It's on my phone. You know, you have to watch these things. All right, well, let's see the best view. Here's the poor magnolia that last week was so stunning and then the snow fell and... Okay, well, maybe this is better. And I'm only doing it this way because then we're not looking into the sun. But when this magnolia was fully leafed out, I did not know there was a nest in it. Until last fall when the leaves dropped and winter came, and all of a sudden I saw that nest. Now, this year, over the winter, birds have been sitting in that nest, but they just do that for a resting spot. I'm not sure that any birds will claim it this spring, because I think a lot of them like to build a new nest, a fresh nest. But I'll know now that when this magnolia leaves out, there will probably be a bird in there building a nest and soon I'll get to see the baby birds learning to fly. Well, that's it for today. I look forward to seeing you again, but until then, I like to spend time in my yard. I hope you look for signs of birds eating and birds building nests because birds are so cool. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. <laughs>